In this video, we're going to look at how you manage the storage and retention period for metric data in SAS via monitoring for Kubernetes. We'll see how to find the size of the persistent volume used to store your metric data, how to calculate the current size of the metric data actually stored in that volume, and how to view and change Prometheus's command line flags, which limit the maximum size and retention time of stored metric data. SAS Fire Monitoring for Kubernetes metric monitoring stack has several components, of which the main ones are Prometheus and Grafana. Prometheus collects and stores metric data, and Grafana displays it in dashboards. So let's see where that metric data is stored. In my other video on managing log data retention and storage, I showed how the logging stack's deployment of OpenSearch used a number of different uh, persistent volume claims, three by default, to store log data. But for metric data, Prometheus only uses one PVC, so that makes it much simpler to analyze the amount of data being stored in it. And a couple of things make it easier to manage metric data than it is to manage log data in OpenSearch. For one, it's unlikely that you'll change the frequency at which your metric data is sampled or the set of metrics which you collect. Um, so over time, the rate at which metric data is collected is relatively constant. The only things that might significantly affect the volume of metric data over time would be if you stop and start your SAS fire deployment and leave the metric monitoring stack running or if you scale your via deployment to have more or fewer nodes or nodes and pods, um, or if there are periods where the number of SAS programming runtime servers or CAS pods is very different from usual. But otherwise, your deployment is in more of a steady state, and the rate of metric data collected over time is fairly constant. So how much storage is there and how much is needed? Let's look at that in Lens. Um, so by default, SAS via monitoring for Kubernetes sets the Prometheus PVC size to be 25 gigabytes, and it uses the default storage class unless you specify something else. So here in my lab environment, that's NFS client, which is NFS, um, and that's fine for a demo, but you'd probably want something better in a production cluster. If you prefer, we can see the same thing using the command line and um, kubectl commands. So let's run this kubectl. Uh, we're going to specify in the namespace, but kubectl get pvc. By default, the namespace is just monitoring, but here I've made my namespace called uh, v4m mon. So if we run that command, then you can see the same information that we saw in open lens. Um, we've got the Prometheus PVC here, and it's 25 gigabytes in size. There are a couple of other PVCs in the monitoring namespace. There's one for Alert Manager and one for Grafana, but all of the metric data is stored in this Prometheus PVC. So how do we find out how much data Prometheus is actually storing in that PVC? Well, Prometheus has a very complex way of storing compressed metrics data in a level DB in-memory database, and it also writes data to disk in a similarly complex way. It's highly optimized for performance. And Grafana has a Prometheus dashboard that does show some metrics for um, data that's stored. So if we scroll down here in the Prometheus uh, dashboard and get to the storage section, you can see it is surfacing some metrics, but I don't find these particularly easy to convert into an estimated size. So instead, let's look at the actual size of the physical files um, that are on that NFS file share, um, and we can use that as an approximation for the total size of the data in the database. Um, this works for me on NFS because that's the file system that I'm using, but for other kinds of storage class, you can probably do something similar. So on my environment, the NFS file server just happens to actually be on this machine where I'm running these commands. So I found that the, um, the physical file system directory, which is backing that NFS file share for the file server is in this path and we can see the files stored inside the database there, and I don't think they're really intended for people to, to look through them. That's a, an internal thing for Prometheus. But having found those files, we can then um, loop through any directories that match that pattern. There is actually only one, and for that directory, we can use the du command in Unix um, to measure the amount of disk space being used by those directories and sum it all up, and that reports a result in kilobytes. 
and then we can use some more commands. We can just pipe that result through um, and some awk and print and bc commands. bc is the basic calculator um, that we're going to pass it through here so that we can divide that number by 1024 and convert it to a size in megabytes. Or we can divide it by 1024 and again by 1024 and calculate it in gigabytes. Um, if you watch my other video about managing log data retention and storage, you can see a much more thorough explanation of those commands. I won't repeat this, the same explanation here. Again, other storage classes are going to work differently, but one way or another, you should be able to find the size of the underlying files without too much difficulty. So we've got about 3.4 gigabytes worth of, of data being stored here. It's reasonable to assume that most of the data in the Prometheus PVC is metric data. Um, there will be a little bit of configuration content and, and you know other uh, settings data in there, that sort of thing. But the vast majority of it is going to be metric data. So I think we can treat this figure as being an approximation for the total metric data size. Now, let's look at Prometheus's configuration settings for how big this metric data is allowed to become and how old it can be before the oldest data starts getting dropped. Let's switch over to Prometheus. And in Prometheus, there is a um, command line flags tab where we can filter on uh, command line flags that begin with a particular string. And we're going to look for storage.tsdb, that's a time series database, dot retention. This first flag here has been deprecated since Prometheus 2.8, I think, so we're, we're way past that version now. The only two that are important for us are these two here. So there is a maximum um, retention size, which by default is set to 20 gigabytes, and a maximum retention time of one week. Now, we noticed that the PVC storing this data is 25 gigabytes. So the 20 gigabyte data retention limit set here in Prometheus is allowing some free space to be left available for caching and configuration and content data, um, just to make sure that we don't fill that PVC. So um, if we go back to the slides for a second, we now have the numbers that should allow us to determine whether the storage space is sized correctly for the number of days worth of metric data that we're storing. If there is too little space for the number of days worth of data that we're retaining, then we'd expect the actual size of the data in the PVC to be at or near that set maximum size limit, that 20 gigabyte limit that, that Prometheus sets. Conversely, if there's too much space for the amount of data that we're trying to store, we might expect the actual size of the data in the PVC would be way below that 20 gigabyte limit, even after the environment has been running for the set retention time. Now, we saw that my data was 3.6 gigabytes, but my my environment's actually only been running for about three days. So by the time it's been running for seven days a week, um, I'd expect that to be more like seven, eight gigabytes in that kind of order, but still quite comfortably below the maximum size that it will retain. So experience will allow you to fine tune these parameters for your particular environment, but I suggest that having the P PVC store something like 80% of the volume of data that the retention size specifies would be a, a reasonable starting point. And then you could refine the retention size and time limits up or down from there according to your needs. So how do you do that? How do you change the retention size and time limit? There are two ways to do it. Um, there's a quick way, which doesn't persist if you undeploy and redeploy the monitoring stack, and a slightly slower way, which would persist. The quick and dirty way um, to change the retention period is to use a kubectl patch to directly change the configuration properties of the um, Prometheus uh, Prometheus operator. So let's go look at that. If we um, let's go to workload and pods, we'll make sure we're in the right namespace, and we can see the Prometheus pod here. And then if we just make our terminal window a little bit smaller, let's do that. Um, and now we've got a bit of space to run some commands and to see what's happening to our pods at the same time. So this first command is going to be a kubectl patch that will set the retention period to just six days rather than one week. And I'm also going to run another similar one um, just to show both things that you can change um, that will change the uh, maximum retention size down from 20 gigabytes to 15 gigabytes. 
And you might have noticed when I ran even the first of those commands that the Prometheus pod was immediately terminated by the Prometheus operator because it was watching those um, configuration settings and it knows to restart the Prometheus pod um, as soon as those configuration settings change so it can pick up the, the, the different settings. So that takes, I think in my experience, somewhere between 60 and 90 seconds. Oh, okay, looks like it started. That's great, a little bit quicker than I was expecting. So we should be able to go back to Prometheus now and I'll just copy that search string and hit refresh. And when we look at the values of the command line flags, we can see now that the retention size is down to 15 gigabytes and the retention time is six days rather than one week. So um, that's great, but that change isn't going to persist if we redeploy the monitoring stack because the deployment's configuration files, nothing has changed those. They still have the original um, maximum retention time and deployment size in them. So let's go and have a look at how you'd change that. Um, if we read the instructions for how you deploy SAS fire monitoring for Kubernetes, um, there are clear instructions in the documentation that describe all of the user configuration files, including this one for the monitoring stack called user values prom operator. And if we go and have a look at that in Vi, and I'll sit, switch number line numbers on, um, you can see kind of a roundabout lines 50-ish, 57, 58, there, thereabouts. There are these two settings for the period for which data should be retained and the maximum size that that data is allowed to grow to. So if you edit those values here to be something like, um, so I'll need to oops, move the cursor here, one second. If you set these values to the same ones that you just set in the patch, so let's, um, so that would be 6D there, and wrong key on the keyboard. And then we can set that value here. If you save that change, then the next time you redeploy Prometheus as part of the monitoring stack, you basically deploy the whole monitoring stack at once, then the new values that you set through the kubectl patch command will still be applied and will still persist in your environment. So that's it for this video, nice and simple. Um, you now know how to calculate the current size of the data and how to see what the Prometheus limits are on maximum metric data retention size and period and how to change them. Um, please let me know in the comments below if this has been a useful video or if there's another topic that you'd like me to make a video about. And for more tips and tricks, take a look at the other videos in the SAS Technical Insights and Expertise series. Watch out for more videos from me on log and metric monitoring in SAS via monitoring for Kubernetes.